What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. Yet another eruption from this hyperactive region that's now turning towards the Earth and is almost visible over here at the Solar Dynamics Observatory. You can see a collection of sunspots very close together, and more than likely, that's what's creating these large eruptions. This last one was measured as an M2. They think it might have been an X flare. I know it was detected almost instantly down here in the ionosphere D region, the shock wave from this this large flare arrived within a matter of a couple of minutes and right now they're reporting over here at spaceweather.com a crack in the Earth's magnetic shield today January 14th and the crack is opening right now as I do this video more than likely we'll see a geomagnetic storm in the very high latitudes of planet Earth over the next 24 to, to 48 hours we'll come back and talk more about that here in just a moment I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the snowstorm it's starting to get underway you can see over here at the go 16 Snow is beginning to fall now up in the Dakotas and Minnesota. It's going to be making its way down through Iowa, Illinois, just like we talked about the other day. Come over here to windy.com. You can see the snowfall totals are pretty much the same. They haven't changed too much. Looking at 9 inches, 10 inches in the Des Moines, Iowa area, right through the, the central part of Iowa, then down into Tennessee starting on Saturday, late Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday, anywhere from 10 to 12, 13 13 inches, extending up through eastern Ohio, 10 inches. Up in western New York, you could see maybe 17 inches. Just a wide area of 10 to 12 to, to 15 inches of snow covering multiple states over the next 72 hours. Looking at the map over here at poweroutage.us, right now no significant power outages to report. However, this could change over the next few hours as this snow starts to accumulate on trees and power lines and, and these winds pick up. Expect power outages, especially east of the Mississippi River possibly covering multiple states over the next 72 hours. Take you guys now over here to the website. Quick look at the Schumann Resonance. You can see a, a little bit of background noise. More than likely that is from the, the interplanetary shock wave that was generated by this, once again, a large solar flare. More than likely this was in the X-class range. This is still facing away from the Earth, but it is turning towards the Earth right now as I do this video. And here are the solar flares. That was an M1. That was a strong M1, quite possibly an M2, and it lasted for the better part of three hours, and then yet another strong C flare, another strong C flare, and look for activity to continue over the next few days as this turns towards the Earth, and we could see some Earth-directed solar activity over the next week as this thing slowly turns towards planet Earth. I want to take you guys now back over to spaceweather.com where they're talking about a crack in the Earth's magnetic field. Basically, when a crack occurs in the, the magnetic field, it's only temporary. It allows solar wind of any kind, whether it's high-speed solar wind from a coronal hole or just normal solar wind. It allows it to pour in unchallenged. And when this happens, it typically sparks bright auroras in the high latitudes of planet Earth. And they're also talking about the ionosphere lighting up almost instantly from yet another large eruption on the northeastern limb of the sun. But right now, the interplanetary magnetic field is tilted to the north. Whenever you see the interplanetary magnetic field tilted south, that means solar wind can flow in unchallenged. And when that happens, it typically sparks auroras, especially in the upper latitudes of Earth. It doesn't last for a very long time. It's always temporary. It can last anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. But right now, there is a crack opening in the Earth's magnetic shields, literally right now as I do this video. I also wanted to show you guys the active region that, again, is turning towards the Earth. This is a close-up view of the latest solar flare. More than likely, this was in the X range. It was measured as a strong M2 because it was not facing the Earth. If that would have been Earth-directed, more than likely, that would have been measured in a X-class range. Look like yet another strong solar flare. Here I paused it. Even from this angle, it looks like a, a classic X flare. Either way, it was strong, sent a shock wave through the, the solar system that again was picked up by Earth's magnetic shields almost instantaneously. Also in this video, I've got a brand new picture slideshow, new sky phenomena photos sent up all around the world. Dale out of Fort Lupton, Colorado, some incredible fiery orange skies. 
from Fort Lupton, Colorado. This next segment is a video clip of a sunrise recorded by Alexis from Los Angeles, California. Yet another fiery orange sky, this time viewed from the west coast of the United States. This video footage was sent in by Sharon B., and I'm not exactly sure of the location, but she noticed something way off in the distance that did not look like an airplane, like something falling through the atmosphere of planet Earth, a bright orange object with a very small tail. Don't know what that was, if maybe that was some sort of a, a meteor or space debris, or it could have been an airplane at a very unusual angle. Angle. Video footage here sent in by Kendra from the International Space Station. As the space station was going over the South Pacific Ocean, these came into the field of view. And those are little islands out in the, the South Pacific picked up by the International Space Station. Another video by Mary Hall from the International Space Station. As it was out over the Indian Ocean, she noticed yet another unidentified flying object right there above the Indian Ocean. And there's nothing out there. No land at all. The space station was completely above water at the time she noticed that. And this next photo is from the International Space Station, sent in by Mary Hall as it was above Argentina. You can see wildfire smoke from 250 miles above planet Earth. These next photos were sent in by Marlene T. out of Franklin, Kentucky, of yet another what looks like a fiery object falling through the atmosphere at a steep angle, visible from Franklin, Kentucky. This next segment is a video clip by Jay out of Long Beach, California. You can see a jumbo halo in the sky, very low on the horizon, in the proximity of the sun. That was a video he sent in, and then he sent in this still image of a very impressive giant halo. Christopher O. out of Morgantown, North Carolina. Fiery orange sky at either sunrise or sunset with a very unique cloud here right in the center. It looks like some sort of a rectangular ship just sitting in the daytime sky. This next photo was sent in by Christy and Nathan out of Springville, Utah. Looked like a giant anvil in the sky. Noel M. out of Livingston, California. Yet another fiery orange sky at sunrise or sunset. Matt S. out of the United Kingdom. More fiery orange skies. Purple and pink sky by Lightworker Scorpio out of Parump, Nevada. Great job, guys. Keep the photos and videos coming. If you have any photos you'd like to share, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com. All of the photos end up here at the Sky Phenomena Photo Gallery at the website. And sometimes I'll use them in a video just like you saw right here. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.